So here's the screen. So far, welcome. Login, nothing to really look at. Sign up with some fields. Okay, so in order for all of this to work, the actual sign up, this is when we're going to get into some JavaScript. So we're going to put away the HTML for a moment, and then we're going to write some JavaScript so that it can check your email, confirm that the passwords match, and so forth. This HTML file is focused on HTML code. That makes sense. I want to next create a JavaScript file to focus all of our JavaScript code in that file. Just like we have a jQuery CSS file that is full of CSS, and just like we have a jQuery and jQuery mobile JavaScript file full of JavaScript, we're going to do something like that with our own custom JavaScript. So while we're in the HTML file, we're loading the jQuery basic code, then we're loading the jQuery mobile code, then we're going to load our own custom JavaScript code. So go to the very end of the document and copy one of those examples of the script tag, and we'll change it to index.js. This doesn't exist yet, but in the scripts folder, we're going to create an index.js file to have all of our JavaScript. All of the interactivity that we'll check. Is the password correct? Let's save it in the database, etc. Why is the script inside of a body and not <coughs> There's a couple of schools of thought of, should we put the script in the body or the head? Both can work, and it's very common to have both the, the script and the style blocks in the head. But the problem that often happens by putting script first is that the HTML elements are not loaded yet. The web browser is going to process the code. It's going to stop here and do everything that's in that file before continuing. If these things are first, and this says change h1 to red, h1 doesn't exist yet because the processor stopped here to do everything. h1 didn't, it never got to body. h1 doesn't exist. You'll get errors. By putting it at the end, all of the HTML is processed and exists, and then we can manipulate it via JavaScript. So it's often better to have your JavaScript last after the HTML has a chance to exist. So we're about to uh, link to a, an index.js file. Let's go to Notepad, File, New, File Menu, New, File, Save As. We're saving this in the scripts folder, index.js. Save as type JavaScript. So that reference in the HTML file to a file that didn't exist, now we're making it exist with a new file in Notepad, save as, index.js in the scripts folder. save that. And this file will be dedicated to writing uh, JavaScript. This is the file where, this is the language where a lot of things can go wrong, where a lot of things will go wrong. This is the file where it's very, very, very useful to write comments. I didn't really write any comments on the other file. It kind of makes sense what we did. When we get to uh, JavaScript, a lot of complication can come in, so comments, I'll definitely write us a lot of comments. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to write here, a single line comment, a double slash creates a comment, a single line comment, and I'll say uh, uh, 
uh, using an immediately invoked invoked. That's how you spell invoked, right? I'm suddenly forgetting it. Invoked. Immediately invoked function expression. This is also known as an iffy. I'll come back to what that means in a moment, but here's just a comment, a single line comment saying that in the beginning we're writing this in a certain way. Uh, via JavaScript, you know, the, what I said earlier, standards are great, but everyone can invent a standard. Well, JavaScript itself is a standard invented in 1994 by the team that eventually invented um, Firefox. The team that invented Netscape Navigator back in the 90s invented JavaScript. Netscape Navigator eventually evolved over to Firefox. So the people behind Firefox were the people behind JavaScript. So in around 1994. So since then, there have been different interpretations of JavaScript. The thing is that they're all right and they're all wrong. It just depends what you need to do. Just follow a convention or follow a framework or follow a way to do it and if it works it works it doesn't mean it's right or wrong maybe someone's gonna say well that's wrong because your clock cycles are too slow or that's wrong because you use seven bytes instead of six bytes you know if your code works it works and I'm not gonna argue with people that you did it wrong if it does what it needs to do it's it's right all of that about efficiency and elegance and all of that that's something for someone to decide the person programming it so what I'm getting at is that we're going to use this convention of an immediately invoked function expression. Open and close parentheses, open and close parentheses, semicolon. This is a way for us to write JavaScript uh, to do something that could cause problems later to head them off so far that I don't want to get into just yet because it's a whole big discussion. Inside of those parentheses function, lowercase, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. What we're writing here, you can completely ignore, and you'll see plenty of examples and tutorials online that talk about JavaScript and don't use that. And their JavaScript works. This is again what I'm saying. There's many ways to do the same thing. This is one way that I keep seeing consistently over and over to write JavaScript that works better because it, it's about the namespace and the global values of your variables and all this complexity that I don't really want to get into right now. But the short answer is trust me. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to learn it this way and it'll work. I'm going to break these curly braces into a couple of empty lines. But this is setting ourselves up to use an immediately invoked function expression. One way to write, to write JavaScript. The next line here, in quotes, use strict. Strict mode. JavaScript strict mode. There are some errors that happen in JavaScript that are silent errors. And you beat yourself up. What's wrong? It just doesn't work. The web browsers are some of the most lenient compilers. They're not really compilers. I guess they're interpreters. But web browsers are often very lenient when processing code. It's just kind of the nature of HTML and JavaScript and such. Other programming languages and compilers are very, very strict, and you wrote the code wrong, it doesn't work. The end. If you kind of write the code right, it often works very well, HTML or JavaScript. I don't want that. I want to use the strict mode to possibly cause more error messages to help me fix my errors. Some things that could go wrong are silent errors, and the browser will never tell you there's an error until someone else looks at your code and you said, oh, look at what you did, look what you did slightly wrong. Using strict will make the web browser more strict to give us more errors, which sounds bad, but it's good. More errors to help us debug to fix the code. Use stick mode to detect more errors. Console.log JS method 
to output to the developer's console. So you don't have to comment out when you use the slash H, just... It is a comment. A double slash means what follows is a comment. So we don't close it. Oh, close it. No, this is a single line comment, so everything that follows to the end of infinity is commented out. So once you go to the next line. Mm -hmm. I'll show the multi line comment in a moment. This only applies to a single line comment. JS method to output to the developer's console. JavaScript is an object oriented programming language, it deals with objects. Uh, here we're dealing with the console object and the log method. Again, that's a little more complex than I want to say just yet, but the point of this command is that we're going to give ourselves a message in the developer's console in F12. When we're in the browser and we press F12 to see errors, we can give ourselves messages to debug, to help us debug. That's what that does. In quotes, in the parentheses, ready to rock. Whatever message. This is just a proof of concept. Am I writing my code properly? So far. Did I link this file to my index file? So far. Did I put the right file in the right place? So far. We're going to save it and run it and see the result. But save and run your index file, because if you run your JS file, the browser will just show you JavaScript. So if I run this, Firefox says, here's your code. No, I want the index code. And then I want to open the developer's console, F12, console, ready to rock. If you don't see that, that means you didn't write your JavaScript code properly, or you didn't link to your JavaScript file properly, or you didn't put your JavaScript file in the place that this code expects. So is everyone ready to rock, or is someone missing their rockitude?
right? So this is just a message that uh, proof of concept that we're confirming that the um, JavaScript file is connected. Uh, so, making notes here. This is where I'll make a multi-line comment. Multi-line is done this way. I want to write more than one sentence. This only creates one sentence of a comment. Slash asterisk, asterisk slash is a multi-line JavaScript comment. Multi-line JS comment. What I want to write is JavaScript is object-oriented programming. Oop. Object-oriented programming. How many of you, when I, on the very first day I asked you to raise your hands if you knew different languages? Uh, quick show of hands again. How many of you took like a C++ class? C sharp, Objective C, uh, so many of these other languages are object-oriented. JavaScript is as well, although it's not exactly the same. If you have the experience of those other languages, you'll see some big differences. That'll make you think, why did they do it that way? But then, um, again, all, as long as your code works, it works. So the point of this uh, object-oriented is JavaScript uh, represents items, represents items, objects, nodes, as items, values, nodes as objects. JS uses methods to do things. So we have methods that we'll use, we have objects. We have the console object which is basically that developer's console. So we're saying, we're going to do something with the developer's console. The something is log, output. That's a method. A method is being used on that object. There's the dot operator there, the member operator. It's saying to that object, we're doing something. We're writing log output. This is an object built in the developer's console. We have other objects like window, history. We can manipulate the history, go forward and backward in history by using the history object of the web browser and the method previous or the method next. So there's methods that are the commands, so to speak, to do something. And then there's the objects, which are the things that we're doing them to, in short. What I want to do is, um, when, we, when we click the Go button to sign up, several things need to happen. It needs to check, did the person type an email? Did they type the password? Was the password the same twice? Does the account exist? A lot of things need to happen. So we're going to bundle a bunch of methods together in a function. So after the comment, we'll have the function keyword. We're going to invent a function called fn sign up. Open close parentheses, open close curly braces. Yeah, in the first function, we're going to need to do a variety of things. As soon as you click that button, do a variety of things. So we're bundling all of those variety of things in this function. Uh, use the JS keyword function to create a function, a bundle of actions, a bundle of methods, a bundle of commands. I'm going to make single line and multi line comments all the time. Often it's easier for me to give you a comment simply with a double slash no space on that. If you put a space between those two slashes, it's no longer a comment, and it thinks all of that is JavaScript, valid JavaScript. So no comment between the slashes. You can put comment spaces after it, but I like to put a space for readability. 
So we're inventing the JavaScript command, the JavaScript method, function sign up, fn sign up. We can call these whatever we want. Keyword function, we created it. Um, this will accept, accept an argument of event. Just trust me on that one for the moment. And then we're going to do curly braces, break those into multiple lines. Several commands are going to happen here, all bundled together. We bundle all of these commands together so that then we can invoke them at the same time. Later we'll use function sign up. When you press the button, run function sign up, which will have 10 things that happen at once in sequence. That's the whole point of creating functions. Do a bunch of steps in sequence by calling one thing, by using one thing. Uh, this is, you, you can decide if you want, how often you want to do this. I do it all the time, especially when I'm writing some new code so that I know exactly what's going on. I'm going to do console log output all the time to give myself feedback about how things are working or how should work. So this one is totally superfluous, but I like to do it. Start fn sign up. I will get an output in the console that says this is where I'm starting to use the function sign up function. That will be a comment added to the console. At the end of most JavaScript commands, I'm adding a semicolon, end of statement. I did it up here for you strict, I did it for the first console output, and I do it here. We don't do it when we create a function. When we define a function, we didn't have a semicolon at the end. It will work if you put a semicolon there. And if you look it up online, people are arguing all day long about if that's right or wrong. Both are right, kind of. But that one's more right. So in this, in this particular event, it's um, similar to CSS syntax. Yes, that we have a semicolon at the end, like CSS, that says, you know, kind of end of line, end of statement, end of statement yeah. and the curly braces as well, as if we were creating a CSS selector here. Okay, but instead of colon, we use parentheses. Yes, we've got a parentheses here instead of a colon. Why this is just a comment. When it pops up in the developer's console, it's telling me I just started to use my function sign up function. Okay, so for the moment, obviously this is going to do a lot. But what I want to do is I want to link that when you click the go button to run the function sign up event or function sign up. Because if I run this, it's just going to say the ready to rock part. It should not say function start. We haven't used that function. We haven't invoked it. We haven't called it yet. We're going to call the sequence of events upon a button click. So here is where more of this object-oriented programming comes into play. I want to create a JavaScript object that represents the HTML button in the HTML file. So var to create a variable, a container, an object. In JavaScript variables are objects, and an object, a variable in most languages is a container. Right? This whole stuff. This container here holds water. This container can hold water or apple juice or cranberry juice or some other clear liquid, uh, like vodka or gin. So this container holds a liquid, but it's a container. It's a variable. It changes. It varies. So it holds something. We're creating a new container here, which we will call uh, el dollar el. form sign up dollar symbol there um, we're going to create a variable to represent the form that we're 
that we've created in the HTML file. So we're calling it $EL for element, L form signup. We're creating a variable equals dollar symbol, open close parentheses, semicolon. The syntax of the dollar symbol is jQuery. Create a variable, an object, to represent the form tag in the HTML file using jQuery syntax and jQuery selector. So I'm in a JavaScript file, I'm in the world of the JavaScript. In the HTML file, I'm in the world of HTML. So what I'm trying to do, conceptually, is in the JavaScript file, look into the HTML file and find the form so that we can use it in JavaScript. So I'm creating a variable to represent the form. And I'm going to find that form with the jQuery selector. Dollar symbol parentheses is the jQuery selector. In quotes, the ID of the form in the HTML, which was pound form sign up. In HTML, ID attribute. In JS, pound represents the ID attribute. In the HTML file, we have that form. Form tags, and it said ID equals form signup. ID equals form signup. ID is represented by the pound sign. Create a variable. Find the form called ID form sign. jQuery way to do it. I'm going to start the line with a comment because I'm going to write the same thing but with plain old JavaScript just to compare. Plain JS. The motto of jQuery is write less, do more. Both of these are equivalent, basically. Both of these are exactly the same creating a JavaScript representation of an HTML element, a JavaScript object of an HTML node. Both are doing the same thing. So look at how much more wordy the plain old JavaScript is. But it kind of makes sense. Go to the document, the main HTML document object, and use the method get element by ID find some element in the HTML document by its ID, which ID form sign up. No pound, no pound sign because ID is right there. All of that then is going to be shorthand L form sign up. No dollar symbol. Because I'm using jQuery selector to select an HTML node to create a variable. So I'm marking it with the dollar symbol. I use jQuery to select something via jQuery. I did not use jQuery, I used plain old JavaScript to select something, so no dollar. Both of these will work, either or. We're going to use the jQuery oftentimes because it's just shorter. It's less, at first glance, you can't quite tell what it's doing perhaps, 
but you know, that makes a little more sense what's happening perhaps than just a dollar. The, the, the dollar sign to basically tell JavaScript to go to jQuery, is that what happens? Basically it's saying, yeah, use jQuery. That jQuery file has, a, has it all written longhand. And it's all just put as a shorthand as the dollar symbol. With the dollar symbol parentheses, we can make a selection of a node. So yeah, the JavaScript is just saying, okay, pass this off to jQuery and have jQuery do its thing to select a JavaScript, an HTML node. So the whole point of this is, okay, this is sort of then we've captured or we're paying attention to the form in JavaScript. Now when someone clicks that submit button, run the function to start that the rest of those steps. Next, uh, L form sign up dot add event listener parentheses semicolon object dot method we've seen that several times console dot log object dot method object dot method JavaScript object dot method we've invented an object it's based on the form in HTML method or command add event listener we're waiting for an event. We're waiting for something to happen. Oh, actually, uh, let's comment that out. I'm thinking the plain JavaScript, sorry. L form sign up dot submit. I was thinking the long way. So if we had created the object with plain old JavaScript, this, what I was about to write, would have been what we wanted. The plain old, without the dollar here, the plain old JavaScript way to do it. In the event of something, in the event of submitting the form, do something to that object. We're using jQuery, that's the one that I kept. We're using jQuery.submit. There's a, there's a jQuery command that simplifies. Again, write less, do more. That dollar symbol is basically all of that. Submit is this, plus more that we'll write there. But that is saying, when you click Submit on that form, do the following. Function, open close parentheses. This will get a little messy here, so be careful. Function, open close parentheses. Remember, I always recommend when you write your code and in pairs, open and close the pair open and close curly brace. We've got a pair of parentheses for submit, we've got a pair of parentheses for function, and a pair of curly braces for function. Inside of the curly braces, ultimately the name of the function that we made up in order for it to do something. A lot of comments and such, but JavaScript again is the most complex of all. In the old, plain old Java, JavaScript, just to have it complete, um, quote submit, comma, function, parentheses, curly braces, fn sign up, parentheses, event. Since that code is commented out, obviously it's not going to do anything, but just for compare and contrast. Plain old JavaScript, creating the plain old JavaScript object, and then using an event listener. Listen for something, wait for something, they submit. Once they submit, 
happens on that object, run the function, function sign up. All of that is simplified with jQuery. Upon that object, when a submit is done, run a function. Save it and run it, and all of that is to simply set ourselves up that if you click that Go button, it's still not anything about checking the password, checking the database, that's still coming. But all I'm trying to do here is, am, is my code correct enough at the moment that if I click the button in the console, I will get the message, start the function. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run the index, open F12, open the developer's console, that is. Make sure your spelling is correct. Line 26. Form sign up. Oh, misspelling. I put a lowercase u, but I did find I, I defined it up here. Uppercase u, no one pointed it out, so 10 points minus everyone. Uh, uppercase u, lowercase u, whoops, my mistake, so that's why I got an error there. No error. Okay, so if I go to sign up, I click the go button. Oh, after I fill it in, it's not going to fully work yet, but I'll put something in it. Click go. Our messages. Reference error. Event is not defined. Line twenty six. item right here. Event here also, passing it in. Um, the function event to pass into the function. Just, that's right for the moment. Of course I'll explain what that means in a moment, but we're getting close to the end of the day. At least what I want it to kind of give that message. It's not fully functional yet, of course. And let's see how mine is. See, again, obviously I make it... Mine often seems like it works, but I have to double-check it also. So I get the message, start fin start function sign up. Don't worry about that parsing error just yet. We're going to get to that eventually. But um, I do get that start the function. I think if you run it also in Chrome, it gives you slightly different output. Sign up. Add a fake email. Password. Doesn't have to match yet. Click go. That's fine. That's okay. But I'm seeing start function sign up. So that did not appear until I clicked the, that go button deal with this scary error later. But all of this is to set ourselves up. The button is active. The, the, the form, we're referencing it in, in JavaScript. We're starting to see something. Now it's a lot of a lot of writing just to make that button work and we're not even there yet, but that's the nature of this, that this is the hard one. This is where we have to write a lot of code and debug it a lot. So we've got the function that will be our steps. We create a representation of the form and then once the form is submitted, run the function we created. And the order I've got it in here, again, the order does matter. If you put it in a different order, like if you put this one first, we're trying to submit to an object that doesn't exist if this was after this. So invent the, invent the object, then wait for it to be submitted. Have a function ready to use then. So the order now, we will, it will start to matter. Yes? Uh, don't you throw up this line 14 uh, P? Not really, because it's a comment. 
but you're right, good I, that should be lowercase, but it doesn't matter programming-wise because it's a comment and it'll just output that as is. So we'll stop at this point. We'll have a little lab time. I'm going to put my code up to this point. Again, it's not fully working, of course. There's still more to do. But at the very least, hopefully you get some feedback that says that the function, you know, it's ready to rock. And then it says, you know, when you fill in the fields here, it'll then say starting to use that function. We'll deal with that error later.